Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Here to ask you a question. Does your speech betray you? Check it out. I want you to hear this. Yeah, this is deep, y'all. Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 73. Now, let me see. I think I'll go with start. Starting at first, uh, yeah, at first I think we'll go with verse 69. Okay. Now, Peter sat without in the palace. You know why he was sitting outside? Because Jesus was being persecuted. He had just been arrested. And they were spitting on him, slapping him, just totally disrespecting him and, and toying with him. You know, after blindfolding him. No, well, yeah, who slapped you? Who did this? Who did that? It's really cruel the way they messed with him. Now Peter is getting ready to fulfill the prophecy of Jesus where he denies him three times. And these are a few of the times that he denied him right at this point. Now Peter sat without in the palace and a damsel came unto him saying, thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. Oh, but he denied before them all saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he asked, when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them, that were, with it, that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou art one of them. For thy speech betrayeth thee. Now my question to you is, does your speech betray you? Or are you equivalent to an undercover agent? Now the reason I ask you that is because there are so many Christians out there, born again. And when it's convenient, they might talk about the Lord, and that's fine. But when things go down and their nerves get raggedy, oh, they'll get to cussing like everybody else. So their speech is not betraying them because they sound like everybody else. There is nothing about them that says, you're one of them. What is there about you where people can look at you and say, yeah, they're one of them. That's one of them Jesus freaks. Oh yeah, I can tell. That's a real one right there. That's a bona fide Christian. Well, how can you be bona fide if you cussing as good as the rest of the sailors? How can you be bona fide when you're getting into fist fights? How can you get how can you call yourself bona fide when you're slapping your wife upside the head or you women slapping your husbands in the face, kicking them, doing all kind of disrespectful things out in the public side? How can you call yourself a born again Christian when you act like the devil's own child? How can you do that? Well, God understands my heart. I mean, he knows all that I've been through and I just have a short temper. I can't help it. Oh, baby, what you can't help, God can. And if you're going to God, you will get that help. But you got to go to God to get it. And if you're not going to God, then you're right. You got to can't help it. Because you can't do it on your own. You have to have a supernatural power working on your behalf, working in you to change you. If you don't have that supernatural power, baby, you're on your own. And you're at the dispense of the devil. You're at his mercy. He can pull your little strings and push your little buttons and, and, and move you any which way he wants to. And all you do is dance to his tune, sing his lyrics, and act a fool. But you know what the Bible calls that? This is the sad part. When you've gone around broadcasting that you are a born-again Christian, you are a follower of Jesus, and you, 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 your sins are forgiven. 
But then you turn around and act a you act the butt. Yeah. Just the way that the, that the devil wants you to. You act the butt up in public. You don't know how to use self-control. You don't know how to maintain your cool. But you get out there and let it all hang out. Because you're big and bad enough to. Well, the Bible calls that crucifying Jesus afresh. Crucifying him all over again. Taking him to an open public shame. By your behavior. By the way you carry yourself. By your lack of character. By your lack of holiness. Your obvious lack of holiness. You know how people say, there's something wrong with this picture. Yeah, I don't see Jesus anywhere in it, y'all. Now you look at Sister Appleseed over there, or Brother Banana Head, and they, no matter what goes down, they're living in faith, they're full of the character of Jesus Christ, they exemplify his love, his peace, his patience, his kindness, his goodness. No matter what goes down, you never hear a cuss word come out of their mouth. You never hear argumentation coming out like they just they just have to start an argument that ends in a fist fight. They're not going toe to toe, giving spite for spite, paying evil for evil. They're not doing that. And as a result, their behavior, their conversation, their demeanor, their speech betrays them. Because what their speech tells everybody is, you're a follower of Jesus Christ, and it's obvious on you. So you want people to say your speech betrays you. You want it to be obvious all over you that you belong to God's kingdom through Christ Jesus. You want that. It's a good thing for somebody to say, your speech betrayeth you. It's a good thing for people. Oh, I can tell you're different, baby. I can tell you're a child of God. It's all over you. But if they can't tell, unless you open your mouth and say it, something's wrong with that picture. Something to pray about. That is definitely something to pray about. Because what ends up happening is through your lack of character, through your lack of holiness, through your lack of integrity, through your lack of love and mutual respect and your peace, what ends up happening is you end up being one of the Mm, how can I say this? One of the mannequins, one of the dummies, one of the uh, the 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 the, uh, the little wooden figures, the puppets that Satan uses to run people as far away from God as they can get because of the way you allow the devil to have his way in your life through your mouth with your attitude and all your ways. So when people look at you, they huh? I don't know what they're talking about being a Christian. I never knew they were, they act like the rest of us. I know they don't call themselves a Christian. They're no better than me. What are you doing in your behavior, in your representation? How are you representing God? How are you carrying yourself? How do you dress? Ooh. Do you have boobies hanging out, flashing the sunlight all over the day? For all the brothers to, hey. Are you shaking it? Hey, baby, you like it? What are you doing with your body? How do you represent Jesus? Would you be more attractive to a pimp than you would to a, a priest? I mean, come on, think about it now. Think about it. What are you advertising? Yeah, your wares or your bears? What are you advertising? And why? 
Okay. Well, how are you men carrying yourself? You know what a lady told me? She said that there are countless numbers of born-again Christians that she has dated that she cuts loose in a New York minute. She doesn't even spend time trying to develop a relationship with them because every single one of them has to come clean with her and admit after she pins them down that, yes, they are trying to get her in the sack. And when she looks at him and says, well, how can you sit there and say you're a born-again Christian when all you can think of is, is boobs, butt, sex? I mean, what is it? And what do they all say? They have one sentence in common. God knows. He, he knows my heart. Yeah, but he knows I got needs. You know, one of the things that shows that you lack wisdom is the lack of the fear of God. When you are not afraid of the consequences he can personally bestow on your life. You're, you're in dangerous, you're in a very dangerous place. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He who sows to his flesh will reap of his flesh. He that sows in his spirit will reap life everlasting. What are you sowing, baby? You sowing your seed, seed over here, seed over there. Hey, baby, come on, daddy's got something for you. Whoop! Do you look good, mama? Born again Christian, not only born again Christian, preacher, pastor, minister, evangelist. Are you evangelizing, all right? You ain't exactly evangelizing Jesus. But you sure got something down in your back pocket, front pocket, side pocket, whatever you want to call it, that you are more than willing to distribute among the saints. No one. You're getting ready to mount the pulpit. You're getting ready to mount the pulpit and share the word of God. And it doesn't bother you one bit that you're living a double life, that you're speaking with forked tongue. It's sex over here and God's word over here. It's sin over there and holiness. Hey, glory to God. Glory to the Father. Hey, baby, you know, you just got to, you just burned me up, baby. I got to have some of that. Out of the same mouth, Blessing, cursing, good, evil, holiness, lustfulness, lust, just straight out lust. And you're good with that. It's all good, baby. Prayer time. Time to come clean, repent. And when I say repent, I don't mean, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Oh, that was good. No. I'm not going to do this crap again. I am so sorry. I will sit myself down. I will not mount your pulpit while I'm mounting bodies in the bedroom. I won't mount both. I will mount your pulpit or mount those bodies but I'm not going to play two against the middle. I'm not going to love God and mammon. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to get away with? What are you willing to allow to get loose in your life? What do you love the most? Because if you love the bootte the most, then the bootte is your God. That is your idol. And God says, thou shalt have no other God before me. Okay. 
something to pray about, brothers and sisters. Does your speech betray you? Does your behavior betray you? Can people tell by looking at a glance that you are truly a woman and man of God, living a holy life with God's character just gleaming out of you? I mean, do they see that? Or do they see a brother checking out the bootay? Or a sister winking and shaking her wigs, advertising. Mm. God have mercy on you. And hopefully God will bring a spirit of true repentance into your life before it is everlastingly too late.